The goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. We do that every Tuesday by sharing the stories and advice of those rocking it on the other side. This week, we are discussing the world of programmatic ad placement with Matt Wasserloff. Matt is a pioneer in the digital ad space and CEO of Blockboard. They're a company that is maximizing advertising performance by guaranteeing ad spend is used to its fullest potential. The Blockboard platform is built on blockchain technology, which provides transparency for every impression, increasing confidence and trust with their advertisers. It's pretty darn cool, and I learned a lot. And think about it. If a marketer places an ad and their media vendors are saying they're getting millions of impressions, there's a chance that those impressions, A, hit the wrong target, or B, hit fake people, or as we call them, bots. So Blackboard is doing the opposite. They ensure your ads are hitting the right people at the right time and that they're real humans. But Matt will explain how they do this in this episode. So we will talk about Blackboard, blockchain, ad placement, and how you can learn how to, how to break in and thrive in this sector. Also, with Matt's credibility and background, he will tell us his predictions for the industry and lend other valuable insights to help us all in our careers. To connect with Matt, head over to myblockboard.com or listen to the end of this podcast or reach out to me. And you could do that by following us on our Instagram, which is at breaking and entering pod or reaching out to me on LinkedIn. My name is Gino Schellenberg. Now on with the show. This is the breaking and entering advertising podcast. And as usual, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberg. Kick it, Mikey. Right, Matt Wasserloff, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. Thanks so much for coming on. How are you doing tonight? Good. Thanks for having me, Gino. I'm excited about this. Absolutely, Matt. Tell the people where you're at right now. I'm the CEO and founder of Blockboard. We Blockboard. are programmatic 2.0 built on Web3. So I'm excited to talk about it tonight. You're going to have to teach me. You know, that's what we're doing here. Uh, we're learning about the industry, different parts of it. And I'm definitely curious. I'm definitely hungry to learn more. Um, so we're going to get into Blockboard because you are the CEO and founder of it. So how long have you been doing Blockboard? Four years. It's amazing. Uh, through the pandemic. So we, 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 got, we got through the pandemic and now nice. we're, uh, we're soaring. So uh, you were before the pandemic. I don't started, even know how so long. Four years ago, started. yeah, we 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 got we got uh, the company started. Uh, there's no question we had to throttle through the pandemic. You know, one of the first things that goes in any recession or any downturn is advertising. Yeah. So we uh we had to you know work through what was a tough time for the world. Yeah. Uh, and we did that, and we came out better, stronger, faster, and uh, and now we're uh, we're really taking taking flight i got it so who's we you keep saying we what's your team look like what did it start with where you at now give us the rundown yeah, we're, tell we're, us about the company we're about 30 people and nice. the we the we uh comprises of uh, a really exceptionally strong team a team that i've actually built the video industry with over the last 20 years uh so these are this is really my people this is really a team that uh knows seen it all knows where the bodies are buried uh, has built a lot of the original hat that the video industry has worked on. So um, that makes it really special for me. But, you know, most important is this team is going to change the industry. And that that's what uh, this industry needs. And that's where we're taking it. So that's the way. Got it. Love it. So tell me, so help me understand the what again. Because I'm familiar with traditional advertising. Uh, I work at an agency that's mainly who we talk to are advertising creative professionals that work at these large agencies. So tell me, like, what what are you guys offering? Explain to me, because I'm not too familiar and I want to learn. Okay. And our audience wants to learn what you guys are providing out there in the world. Yeah, I mean, the, the what is a platform. Uh, and the world doesn't need another platform. So I, 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 you know, I wanted to answer your question and answer it direct. 
Sure. Uh, but what the what the uh, industry does need is a fix because the video ecosystem uh, has th- systemic and serious issues. Uh, there is somewhere between ten and twenty billion dollars of the fifty million of the fifty billion dollars is bought. Okay. And I'm saying it here. Uh, we have somewhere around 10 to, or 20% uh, we know are bots. And so what we're doing or we're aiming to do, and we're accomplishing it one advertiser at a time, is we've rebuilt that ecosystem. A lot of CTV and OTT video, and we're doing it by pre-verifying every video impression. We're pre-verifying. So this industry today is reliant upon a suspect post-verification uh, exercise, which has failed. Uh, and I say it's failed because the amount of bots that existed has only grown as the verification companies have grown with them. And so we have yeah. not done much of anything to fix that problem. And so by building our platform, uh, and we built it on the blockchain, uh, and we have now built a, a system that pre-verifies every ad call and distributes 100% real video. Gotcha. So you're telling me sometimes these were not pre-verified. They're post-verified. How? That seems like shouldn't it shouldn't be people weren't pre-verifying before? No, no. I mean, the companies that you might be familiar with are called IAS, Integral Ad Science, uh, Double yep. Verify is another major uh, yep. post-verification company. So um, I don't think they're doing a very good job doing post-verification, but that's what you're getting from them. You're getting post-verification. Okay. So no one is is looking at that ad call at, at its essence, at its beginning, at its genesis, I should say, and making sure that it's going to deliver to a real human being. And that's what we're doing. So that fix is underway. Um, uh, I would say that there's other virtues that come out of Web3 built on our on our platform, Blackboard. Uh, but that and that at its core is what we're doing to fix the industry. Gotcha. I, I, I definitely want to dive into now, like, how did you get into this world? Like, what made you decide to start this company? Because you said it was four years ago. This was pre-pandemic. If I, right. Once again, if I'm getting my, my clock, might be off. But I believe this is pre-pandemic. So, like... What sparked you to get to this point? Like, how did you, why did you want to start your own company? Sure. Did you just see a major issue that you wanted to, to yeah. fix? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, Gino, you know, great questions. And I appreciate it because uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to crush that softball you just tossed me. Um, I started the industry. Uh, and not to date myself because I am getting older. Uh, about 23, 22, 23 years ago, I was the first guy out there putting video ads, which at, at the time were, TV commercials and sure. putting them on the web. So I got I got started at the beginning. Um, I built my the first online video network and the first video ad serving and reporting system. It was called Vindico. Okay. Uh, and with that same team, we saw the rise of bots and a lot of this waste, and we saw it grow exponentially. And that was what we called out and said, we got to fix this. So we got uh, we got started four years ago, pre-pandemic. Um, we started to test with some major advertisers. I'll give you some names: Eight O'clock Coffee, Chipotle, mm-hmm. Dexcom. There were a number of of big advertisers that were looking at the current video ecosystem and and seeing flaws, and were unsatisfied that they were getting real metrics or real uh, KPIs, sales, and said. I want to try something new. Uh, I want to drive my effectiveness. I want to drive my KPIs. And they've given us opportunities to do that. And we have blown away the field. The largest companies in the world, we are blowing away. And I'm talking about YouTube and Trade Desk and Meta. Some of the largest companies are just driving very ineffective video campaigns. And we are solving that. Gotcha. That's interesting because you figure like those large companies like Meta, uh, Trade Desk. I don't know actually how large Trade Desk is. Uh, at Amazon or whatever the, those competitors are, you would think they would have the system pretty much figured out. So, right. Once again, why are you? How are you driving more efficient uh, results? So I would say there's 
three specific ways we're driving better results. First, which is what I already had mentioned, we pre-verify every video impression, every ad call. Uh, and we do that on the blockchain in smart contracts. So we're pre-verifying the ad call, whereas most everybody else uh, are post-verifying. Gotcha. So that's number one. Number two, uh, we're retargeting on that pre-verified video. So nice. when, we, when we say we retarget, we're not doing this the way most companies do in a cookie world. We're doing a cookie less. So we're, we're getting 100% qualified or pre-qualified look. And then we're retargeting to those that have actually driven some form of engagement or have watched those commercials. So that's, that's the second way is that retargeting, cookie-less retargeting. And then the third way is it's uh, on a third-party uh, public reporting called the blockchain. So we're, we're providing third-party reporting um, so that uh, they, these advertisers who have relied for the past 10, 20 years on black boxes with a lack of information or from uh, information only coming from those large companies, now they have a third-party audit. They're getting third-party reporting, third-party tracking. And that is a game changer as well. So those are the three ways that we're driving uh, efficiencies and effectiveness. Love it. And you hinted at it before, but so who are your main customers? Who are you talking to? Who's like, I'm all in, I want this, I need this. As yeah, I mean, possible. it's the, the agencies have been the uh, independent agencies that, you know, have been a little bit more nimble, not a little bit, a lot more nimble. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, so uh, Marcus Thomas uh, out of Cleveland, Ohio, has become a major customer of ours. Shout out. So, uh, and, and there are a number of those types of independent agencies we've had a lot of success with. You know, another one is Beacon Media uh, here in New Jersey. Um, but uh, that, is a, that is the number one, is those independent, smaller, nimble agencies. Um, we are now starting to do business with the holding companies. So we just uh, we just did a deal with Zimmerman Advertising. Uh, oh, nice! Omnicom shop. Yep. Uh, we we just started working with Starcom in uh, in New York and drove nice. high effectiveness on on some of their Medicare uh, 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 work. Nice. So so yeah so so it's you know as I said we're doing this one advertiser at a time. Uh, it tends to be those advertisers that are distressed that are not seeing the results on the major companies I mentioned earlier. Yeah, uh, they're giving us a test, and we're showing them remarkable results. So that's uh, that's how we're building the business. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and I'm sure, especially like those media agencies, like they're they're loving the results, and so are the clients. So it only makes sense. How do you find like how do you get in the door? Like what's what's the tactic? What's your like your new business approach with those? Yeah, I mean, you know, I wish it were easier. It's not. Uh, yeah, it, it's you know, we we tend to find uh, most shops are you know, they have their way of doing things, and of they're course. not necessarily you know excited about changing that. Makes sense. Um, so so it, it comes down to the old school relationships, and mm -hmm. you know, give me the good college try. Let's do a test. Yeah, do a project, right? I'm sure yeah. if they put you on for one small campaign, one project, whatever it might be, they see the results and they have no other choice. They're like, yeah, this makes sense. There's been a way of doing things, and it's worked for a while. Um, we're we're now calling this programmatic 2.0, Gino, mm -hmm. um, because we've had a good run of 10 or, you know, some odd years of programmatic 1.0. Right. Um, and now we're, we're really, we're educating the market, talking about what 2.0 looks like. We talk about it being on a web, in a web three world, you know, web right. three, uh, the, the, I would say the major tenet of web three is decentralization. You know, we've now worked within these major global tech powers that have really wielded their their power and their control and those black boxes are only getting the advertisers so far uh so we need to we we need to blow open those black boxes and that's what we're doing love it love it so now i want to kind of hint at like the current state of the economy and the industry what your predictions might be for it um i guess so Obviously, I think the economy right now, people are saying the R word. It could be heading towards that. We might be in it. I'm not really sure. 
uh, whatever we call it, how would you classify what we're in right now? First question right there. So, so I'm going to use the R word. We're in a recession. I mean, the definition of a recession and you know, they taught us this at business school is two quarters of down growth. And we've had that. So the question to okay. me is, are we going to be in a mild recession with a soft landing or are we going to go into a more harsher recession? Um, I actually believe we're going to be in a more mild recession. I, I feel like the uh, the the uh, current environment is favoring a soft landing. Uh, the Fed is starting to say we're going to back off. Uh, yeah. You know, the three quarters of a rate, uh, three quarters of a point, and we're also seeing uh, hiring somewhat stabilize, even though there are cer certain layoffs out there. What I'm calling this, Gino, is a recession reset. That's what I see, uh, and the reset is really going to allow the trimming of the fat. You know, some layoffs, but, you know, then get ready for some growth, healthy growth. Uh, so I, I like that idea of a reset because it just allows us now as an industry to get a little better, stronger, you know, tighten things, make things more efficient. You know, that's exactly what our company in Blackboard is seeking to do. And yep. we're, we're actually seeing the benefits of that reset. So Interesting. Uh, that's how I see the recession. That's actually, it's kind of refreshing in the way, the way you put it. I, I kind of like that. You get stronger. Yeah. So, I mean, does this remind you of 2008 at all? Not as harsh, obviously. Yeah. Hopefully it's a lot milder. <laughs> um, what can we learn from that as well yeah. from 2008? Yeah, no, 2008 was the real deal. I mean, they they called that the great. They called that yeah. the uh, the great recession. You know, yeah. they, they yeah. so so we were we were actually afraid of the D word back yeah. then. Yeah. That. So this this should be a more mild one. Uh, and as I was saying, it's it's not a complete you know nose dive and and then mm -hmm. you know figure out how we move forward. This is about you know while the while the 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 train is running. Let's make some changes and make sure that uh, we keep the train on the tracks and then we can accelerate as we get out of this thing. Yep. Love it. So now as you're, as you're looking through like your career, what was that fundamental, like big break for you? I think we, we call this breaking and entering. So as you look back and all these great lessons you're sharing with us, uh, obviously you're super qualified. What was the big break for you? Was it and was it an agency? Was it uh, was it a publication? Yep. What yep. was that first break in for you? Tell us about that real quick. Paint us uh, that picture. Great, great question. So my my big break was MediaVest, uh, and in particular Procter and Gamble. Nice. Uh, I started the first online video network, which was called BBE, and the first video ad serving system that was called Vendico at exactly the right time when Procter and Gamble was going to make its move into its first online video upfront. Uh, his name was Adam Gerber at the time. Uh, he's now at Netflix. Uh, ironically, he was at MediaVest then. And what we were able to do as that first network was to help Procter & Gamble package and bring in their upfront buy. So when they were paying premiums on less scalable major streaming networks like CBS at the time, Yahoo, MSN, AOL, yep. um, we were able to be that third kind of that 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 other tier that brought in efficiencies, um, brought in cost efficiencies and the technology. We were able to track as a third party all of that activity across all of those publishers. So we did two, we brought two major values to PG and MediaVest. And when Adam gave me that deal, that was the big break. Wow. How did you learn or get the confidence or the skills just in general to, to do all this? So I... I my first 10 years of my career was in television. Uh, yeah. I was fortunate enough to be at Warner Brothers at this very same time that the marketing people at Warner Brothers were starting to digitize friends. Uh, I remember, I'll never forget, they brought us out to Burbank, California. They put, up, they put on the big screen in the uh, boardroom and they showed us an episode of this really incredibly popular show we were out distributing. Yep. And it was all digitized. They were stopping, fast forwarding, clicking. They would click on Jennifer Anderson's sweater, pop up a, a, a website and say, oh, here, wow. buy it. And my head popped. My head popped. And so I, I remember sitting in that Burbank, California conference room and saying to myself, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do next. 
And yeah. so got into that, learned what I needed to learn and, uh, and off we went. Incredible. Um, wow. Um, what'd you study Where and where'd you go to school? School at Indiana university and studied business. And then, uh, I went to university of Chicago business school and studied, uh, marketing and management. So those, uh, those two degrees had certainly had a lot to do with, uh, with it. Um, but you know, you just, you have to have, I, I would say most importantly is you just have to have a, a little bit of that, that courage and, and faith to put your shingle out there and go for it. Um, you know, I, I hung my shingle and, mm. you know, barged into Adam Gerber's office and he finally said, all right, yes, you got, you could have the deal. It took, yeah. it, took a, it took a little of that moxie, but, uh, ultimately that's, that's, that's how it got it done. I love it. I love it. And, and as you're looking in the future now, uh, for Blockboard and, uh, we looked at predictions with the recession that's going on. Where do you guys stand in the next three, five, ten years? Like, what's what's the vision for the company? Yeah, we're so we're gonna we're gonna take this um, out as a self service. Up to this point, we've been mostly a managed service platform. Um, we're going to CES in Vegas in three weeks to nice. self service platform, um, and we have beta partners uh, that we're going to announce uh, there as well. And we're going for the next you know two to three years. We're going to establish programmatic 2.0 and become the next de facto video CTV platform for the industry. Uh, and we're going to do it all on 100% real pre-verified video. Uh, and for an industry that's really suffered by this, I think it's a great solve. Uh, we're seeing it. We're seeing it through very happy customers. Um, and it's going to now amount to scaling this and, and really uh, taking it out wide. As you grow, this is inevitable from this vision here. I, I, I believe in the process and, and what you're what you're saying. Are you hiring? Can oh, do, yeah. our, do our people that are listening <laughs> that want to jump and, and like who are you looking for? What what would make somebody good at Blockboard or or what's the who who do you want? So we're, we're, we want the creme de la creme. We want the Gino yeah. Stellenbergers. Uh, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> We we we're we're looking for great people who have a shared vision and shared purpose that just want to go out there and conquer the world. Um, I've been fortunate that the first thirty have been mostly those who have you know worked mm -hmm. with me and have you know been on my mission over the past twenty years right. um, through those companies I just mentioned. But uh, now we have to you know go from thirty to three hundred to three thousand, and it's right. it a lot harder. Um, but yeah, we're we're looking for the best to you know, see this, see the vision, get it and want to, you know, go out for that ride. What should they be studying? Like, what would you say, like, is are good, some technical skills, some hard skills that you would say, like, you should get this under your belt before you, you, you think about this industry, perhaps like this right. side of the industry. Excellent. Oh, that's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, you know, we, we, we call it best athletes at uh, Blackboard. You know, we're, we're looking for good people, um, who want to do extraordinary things. They want to work hard. Um, you know, if, if you're studying, you know, I, I, I would say study what you're passionate about, what mm -hmm. gets you excited and go for that. Um, if you're, we're going to share a passion and you're, and you're going to join a company like ours, a working knowledge of the blockchain is a really good thing. Right. Uh, uh, you know, for our technology people, obviously coding, you know, and, and, uh, getting a, a good working, uh, I think that might be the norm now for a lot. Yeah, a lot of these jobs nowadays is having you know, some coding. And then, and then on the same in the on the same way for sales, you know, having some SaaS uh, mm -hmm. experience, having you know, working with platform sales. Yeah, you know, I come from the TV industry, and a lot of my peers have a great media background. You know, and can uh, and can really uh, discuss you know the basics in media, the reach and the frequency, impressions, what have you. But now, increasingly we are becoming a technology sale and the more experience you have selling platforms and being able to talk about platforms and, you know, those different uh, capabilities resident on platforms that becomes uh, a differentiator. Yeah. It seems like they're doing a lot of, like a lot of hiring to those, those SaaS programs. Um, I, I have a good friend of mine who, who's doing that, but um, 
Yeah. I mean, are you look? do you guys do an internship planning one out maybe in the future for yeah. potential? We're excited about the internship opportunities and we're, we're actually looking forward to an exciting announcement around a, a partnership with a former Yankee great uh, and his foundation. Okay. Uh, that we're going to be introducing an internship program with. So we're excited to come back to you, Gino, and uh, talk about that in the spring. All right. Well, who's the Yankee great? That's who I want to know. <laughs> Well, well, we'll have to keep that a secret and we'll, we'll have everybody stay. Where can people follow you guys and like get that latest information and when that does come out? Because I'm dying to know who that Yankee great is and what that foundation is. Sure. Well, we, we are, we're going to be coming out in, uh, I'm sure, across all the trades, the trades mm-hmm. uh, in the industry that you know and love, yep. uh, whether it's Media Post or Digiday or Ad Week, such. But uh, we'll be making that announcement across the industry and we're excited about it. Nice. <laughs> And website, what's the website? How can they look you guys up? I see myblockboard.com. There you go, myblockboard.com. Perfect. And socials, I'm sure you can just find it there. And we'll also link to that and all the necessary, uh, the the links to find you guys um, in our podcast description. But Matt, also, I want to ask you a question. So if people want to reach out to you, you, I know you're super busy, um, but if let's say they want to, you know, connect with you, is that possible? And how can they do that if so? I'm incredibly accessible and I'm on LinkedIn uh, and you can reach me there. And my, uh, you know, you could, people are using my block board. We do have an opportunity to reach out to us and you can ask for me and, uh, and we'll connect. But uh, I would love to talk to your, your audience. Amazing. And was there anything else that maybe you thought of today that we didn't get to cover that you, you, you want to get out there to the people? Yeah, we're we're excited to see uh, any and all at CES in three weeks. Uh, okay, it's a pretty big, pretty big event for us. We're going to be formally announcing and formally introducing our Blackboard platform to the world. So for all of you that are uh, making the trip out west to Vegas, we'd love to see you. We'll be at the Cosmopolitan. Nice, nice. All right, Matt. Well, this has been great. I appreciate you coming on, telling us about your company and teaching us about this industry. Um, it's been a pleasure. So I'm sure people will have questions. People will reach out. If they, you guys want to reach out to me as well on LinkedIn, Gino Schellenberger, happy to make those intros for you. If you're a little nervous or you're busy, I'm here to help as well. So Matt, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Thanks for having me, Gino. Of course. Thank you so much for listening to this entire episode of the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. If you like what you heard, it would mean a lot to us and help us grow and get better guests and better break-ins if you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave us five stars and a small review if you have the time. Be sure to connect with our guests if you like what they said by going to our Instagram at breaking and entering pod. It's all one word, breaking and entering pod on Instagram. We have links to their portfolios and their LinkedIn and they want to connect. So do that. And thank yous. Thank you to Mikey Malarkey, our audio engineer, and Buchan Zhang, our creative director. Can't do it without you two. And a team from the University of Illinois. It's a student team from the agency called AdBuzz. They're a PR agency, and it's been a pleasure working with them. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next week with another amazing guest. Thank you for tuning in to Breaking and Entering. We want to be transparent with our valued listeners, so we'd like to disclose that this episode was made possible through a paid collaboration. The funds from this collaboration were used to produce this episode and contribute to the growth and enhancement of our show. At Breaking and Entering, we are committed to delivering high-quality content that informs, entertains, and engages our audience. We carefully select our partners to ensure that any sponsored or paid content aligns with the values and interests of our listeners. Rest assured that while this episode is a result of a paid collaboration, our opinions and creative control over the content remain independent and, of course, authentic. We prioritize providing valuable insights and experiences to our audience regardless of any paid partnerships. And we greatly appreciate the support of our sponsors and partners as they play a vital role in helping us bring content to your ears. If you have any questions about our partnerships or this disclosure, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Gino, G-E-N-O, at breakenterpod.com. Thank you.